What's up guys, Jacob here. Today I'm going to be answering a question. What is sampling? But it's kind of a trick question because there's really a two-part answer to that. It can mean the reuse of a sound recording in another sound recording. So that would be if you took a song, an existing song, you chopped up that audio and then put it into a new song. Or it can mean recording a series of sounds, say from a violin, and then turning that into a playable instrument that you could then load into a DAW and play with a MIDI controller. So let's take a closer look at these two forms of sampling. I actually just sampled something for a song I was working on in FL Studio. I actually did a video on side chaining where I used this track. That link will be below as well if you want to learn about that. But this track, I heard it on Instagram. It's this singer and he's singing and playing drums. It sounds awesome. It really just caught my ear. And I decided it's like, that's going to inspire me to do something. I need to put a beat around this. So here, I'm going to just solo it so you can listen to it without any effects on it. So because that was played by a live musician that wasn't using a click track or a metronome or anything, uh, it wasn't in perfect time, but I wanted to put it to a beat. Like I wanted, you know, like a, a real strong like dance beat going. So I needed to snap the tempo and made, make it perfect. So I did that. It's now exactly 137 beats per minute. It was actually much slower than that, but then I sped the whole thing up because I wanted it to be faster. Then I also EQ'd out the low end so that my bass and kick and my low end instruments I wanted to add wouldn't fight with it. So here I'm going to turn the EQ on halfway through. You'll hear the bottom end drop out, especially the drums, the lower end of the drums. So now we're really just hearing the vocal come through, which is the part that I really wanted in the song. Then, you know, of course I added some compression limiter, had this ozone thing going. And here's what it sounds like with the full track. So sampling other songs to bring into your songs like this is by no means rare and something that many musicians have used. It's especially very big in hip hop or really a lot of electronic based music. For instance, Kanye, who's done it throughout his whole career, just one of his songs, Gold Digger, comes to mind, which has that old recording of Ray Charles looped in and he's, you know, rapping around Ray Charles. It's a really cool track. If you never heard it, you should check it out. The second form of sampling is when you record a sound or a series of sounds to turn into some type of playable instrument. This can be done on a smaller scale if you say you just recorded your own voice and you just took maybe one note you sang and then you mapped it out in some type of software and then you could play it over a whole keyboard and it would be pitched to all the different notes on the piano. So basically you've just created an instrument out of one vocal sample. But you can take it further than that, and a lot of companies that make virtual software and virtual instruments, they'll record, say, you know, a whole violin section, and they'll have them play at several different articulations and volumes, capture all that in a giant recording session, and then combine it into a playable instrument, to an electronic instrument. You've most likely used a virtual instrument like that before, especially if you've ever created music on a DAW or on your computer in any form. Let me just show you one. I have an instrument from the Vienna Symphonic Library, VSL, open here. And this is a violin orchestra patch. And this was created exactly like I said. You know, they had a bunch of pro violin players in a room recording all these different articulations and volumes and then made this instrument out of it. So here's legato strings. But then I can go to a different articulation. So that's portamento, so now it's stretching up to that top note. Part of the beauty of these virtual instruments, especially the really high quality ones like this, are you know, you don't need a whole orchestra to get a good sounding recording of your music. You can get a library like this and create some really realistic sounding stuff. Just listen to how great and realistic this sounds.
So as you can see, these type of instruments that are built through sampling acoustic instruments, real players, are extremely powerful and the quality of them is astounding. Sometimes you can't even tell if it's a real player or not. And that's opened up so many doors for producers. Think about, you know, your smaller time, maybe bedroom producer. You know, if you want to have an orchestral piece performed 20 years ago and you were writing a piece at home, you didn't have any means just to make that yourself. You needed to book a studio, have an orchestra, pay everybody to do that. And that was a big investment. But now you can get a really affordable library or even get a very professional sounding one for a few thousand dollars and you can make really professional sounding tracks from your bedroom if you want to. So that's sampling. Two different ways of doing it, but both very useful and fun to use in your own music. If you have any questions about it or you'd like to see me do any more in-depth videos on sampling, maybe creating your own sampled instruments, please let me know below because I'd love to do that video. Thanks for watching, guys. I love to check out the comments section, so if you've got any questions or ideas for future videos, please remember to put those below. Hit that like and subscribe button, click here for more videos like this, and remember to go to Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.